Hello everybody, this is Amel and today I'm going to show you how to solve the merge sorted array problem. So given two sorted integer arrays nums1 and nums2, merge nums2 into nums1 as one sorted array. So here they give you nums1 and nums2 for example. So m is the length of nums1 which is three elements, nums1 has one, two and three elements. Um, and n is the number of elements in nums2 which is also three elements but um, as you can see nums1 has enough space to hold the elements of nums2 as well so m is 3 because it has three elements of its own but it also has a uh, space for three more elements which are the elements of nums2 so what they want you to do is to take all the elements of nums2 and put them in nums1 in such a manner that the final result that, that nums1 at the end all the elements are in ascending order so after you put all the elements of nums2 into nums1 uh, what you get in ascending order is 1, 2, 2, 3, 5, 6 so as you can see it says that the number of elements initialized in nums1 and nums2 are m and n respectively so these are the number of elements initialized in nums1, 3, and the number of elements initialized in nums2 in nums is also 3. So and you may assume that nums1 has enough space to hold additional elements from nums2. As you can see, it has those uh, additional space. It has that additional space there. So this is the same idea as the merge function in merge sort. So what we do is that we're going to have two indices or two pointers, one in the first array and one in the second array. And every time we compare the elements in the first array and the second array, and we pick uh, the right element, the, the biggest element. So in this case, we're gonna go from right to left. We're gonna go from right to left. We're gonna have a variable count, and it's gonna be initialized to um, five in this case because that's the last index in nums1 so um, and we're gonna have the index um, in the last element of the first array and another index in the last element of the second array and we're gonna compare which one is bigger in this case 6 is bigger so we pick 6 we put it here in count we decrement count and we decrement this index so now we compare 5 and 3 which one is bigger 5 okay so we pick five we put it here where count is then we decrement count and then we also decrement this index here so now we compare which one is bigger two or three? Oh, three is bigger so now we put three here where count is then we decrement count and then um after we decrement count we also decrement the the index here so now we compare two and two uh, which one is bigger? They are the same. So since they are the same, we pick either one. And we put it where count is, the two, and when we decrement count. So, and so on. So it continues like that. So this is the main idea. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to write the code. So first, um, if you want, you can do some node validation um, of the arrays. So um, but in this case, I'm just going to do uh, the count variable. So integer count gets a value of m plus n minus 1. So 3 plus 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. That's going to put count at the last element of nums1. So this is going to be, count is going to be my result index. Then I want to have an index at the end of nums1 and one index at the end of nums2. So because um, m is 3, if I subtract 1 from m, I'm going to get m to be at this index. So I'm going to say minus minus m. So m is going to be the pointer at the end of nums1. And n is going to be the pointer at the end of nums2. So now I'm going to have a while loop. So while m is bigger than or equal to 0, and n is greater than or equal to 0 that means that I'm within bounds in both arrays so I can compare 
one element from here and one element from here. Initially, this I'm going to compare this element from nums 1 and this element from nums 2 and adjust accordingly. So I'm going to say if nums 1 sub m is greater than nums 2 sub n. So in this case, I will pick the bigger element, which is the one in nums 1. So I'm going to say that nums1 sub count gets a value of nums1 sub m. So in this case, for instance, I pick 6, put it here, and then I have to decrement count, and I have to decrement m. So after that, so decrement count, this is the post increment, the post dec um, decrement operator, and decrement m. Then else, I want to do the opposite because the bigger element has to be in nums2. So I'm going to say that nums1 sub count gets a value of nums2 sub n. So, and as, as before, decrement the count index using the post decrement operator and decrement nums2 index. So by the end of the iteration, um, this is going to take care of those elements, but there might be a case that maybe some elements in nums2 uh, were not passed to nums1. So I have to handle that case. How do I handle that case? I check. While n is greater than or equal to 0, that means that some elements in, num, in nums2 have not been copied to nums1, then I have to pass them over. I have to copy them. So I'm going to say nums1 sub count gets a value of nums2 sub n. And as before, decrement the count index using the post decrement operator and decrement the n index. So now I'm going to run the code. Okay, so it seems to be correct. I'm going to submit the code. All right, perfect. So it's 2 milliseconds faster than 100% of Java Online submissions for merge sorter array. So yes, this is a good solution um, using big O of end time. So please press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.